Kael'thas. Kael'thas is a ranged assassin from the Warcraft universe. His trait you can activate to make your next basic ability more powerful. It does different effects depending on what you use it on. It makes his uh, Q's flame strike deal in a larger area of effect and hit harder. W have no mana, cooldown, no mana cost and no cooldown. And E hits three people instead of just one. Kael'thas, uh, you play path. him in a very artillery style, big hitting fashion. At level 1, you're either going to want to take Mana Addict if you find yourself run out of mana, or you're not going to have a problem with health if you have a healer or two on your team. I'd recommend Mana Addict. If you don't, or you find yourself getting poked, take Fell Infusion to make sure that you heal a little bit. I'm going to take Mana Addict just because at level 4, Choose you want to take talent. Ability Power. It's incredibly, incredibly strong on Kael'thas, considering that you shouldn't die too often if you play him right. Level 7, take Fission Bomb. It's going to help you damage in the late game. Level 10, take Phoenix. It's way more powerful than Pyroblast. The zoning potential is just incredibly strong. Level 13, you can either take Chain Bomb, Living Bomb, a Spreads Living Bomb, if you find yourself being able to get close to the enemy team without too much trouble. However, if you are in doubt, take Flamethrower. It means you can hit from way further back. At 16, Choose pretty simple. Pick Ignite. It just makes you incredibly powerful. At level 16 is going to be your biggest power spike post level 10. And at level 20, I would take Bolt of the Storm. It allows for incredible Some escape. Yet. So, in the early game as Kel'Thash, you're going to want to zone using your D and Q quite often. I... Personally, only ever really use DQ. They share a very similar cooldown, six and seven seconds, so you can just pop it and cast it, and it will clear waves incredibly quickly. As you can see at level 20, your flame strike hits incredibly hard and casts and casts a um, living bomb on the champion, which means that they'll be taking that explosion damage, which you expect that for a few levels ago. Keep clearing waves. If you clear waves well enough and score a few pokes, you'll force the enemy team to go out of position. Do not cast your flame strike just to get a poke. Always cast your flame strike on the minion wave. Don't cast any other abilities unless you want to cast a living bomb just to get a kill or to force them out of way, uh, out of lane. You will run out of mana too quickly, even if you take the uh, mana regen, regen globe. And if you have Malfurion with you, you can kind of afford to do it, but I still would advise against it. Uh, you want to stay laning phase. Malfurion's uh, Malfurion. Kael'thas' power spike doesn't really come until level 10. At that point, you're going to be incredibly strong zone now. And that's a good way to secure a kill, just using all your abilities in combo. Uh, make sure that you cast uh, Phoenix, that's the one. Phoenix behind them where they're going to escape, don't cast it on them, otherwise they will just retreat and your cool and your ulti will be wasted. Bear in mind it is only a 40 second cooldown. You can use it many times, sometimes even twice in the same team fight, which is incredible to me. But anyway, that, that's how it works. You After a few games, you'll get the whole leading them with flame strike. Obviously, if you cast D and then lead them, you're going to have a better chance because the flame strike area is larger. In the late game, do the same thing. Once you hit 16, your main job is just to stand about this far away from the team on the edge of Flame Strike Radius, just hitting them with Flame Strike every so often, putting a living bomb on them. Because as you can see, it does a big hit and a living bomb tick. When it explodes, it does even bigger damage. Don't really charge forward. Only ever, if you are in doubt, make sure you're only ever using your um, your trait, your Verdant Spheres, to buff up your Q. If so your team is losing a team fight and they are retreating, don't be afraid to use your Verdant Spheres and then E. To secure an escape for your team if you can knock up three members of their team. I would really, really uh, advise against using your Verdant Spheres to buff up Living Bomb unless you are like actively going for a kill because you can go like like that. But even then, past 16, Flame Strike does that anyway, so there isn't really that much point in doing that. Kaldaz is incredibly strong. The zoning potential at level 10, I'll just give you an, I'll give you an example of what that looks like in a second. Is very very powerful. So if we, if Arthur chooses to engage us here, or doesn't, but if he were to engage us, or even if we were running away, I could cast Phoenix there, which now means he cannot engage apart from going around this way. And if he goes on this way, I can zone all the way out there with Flame Strike. It's just incredibly strong zoning potential. People don't really take advantage of that too much. People are too scared of it, and rightly so. If you're playing against him, when he uses his E or when he uses his Verdant Spheres, and you can tell that because it's pretty obvious when he's used it. Don't be afraid to dive him. He will only have a stun for one person, even that will be on a very long cooldown, and it will be a skill shot, easily jukeable. And bear in mind, if you have a cleanse or something, it's very, very easy to cleanse, and very obvious when you have been hit by it. Other than that, just play safe with him, don't die. He's one of those heroes where if you find yourself not dying, you're going to do better than most heroes would do. So that will probably kill him from there, which on a tank is ridiculous. You can imagine how much he does on an assassin. So yeah, that's Kel'Thas, he's a very strong hero, I'd recommend everyone pick him up. He does cost 10,000 at the moment, he combos well with Malfurion and Jaina and a few other tanks. I have Mr. G, this has been a micro guide to play Kel'Thas, and I'll see you next time.